and our brain gets lazy. It says, why are you gonna go on a hike? What's another sunset? Playing with the kids, okay, they're so adorable. When can I get my drink? We have an incredible ability to heal and repair. And it's not passive. It is an intentional, active pursuit, but it's a fun pursuit. I'm here with Coach Victoria English. Coach Victoria, why when we stop drinking alcohol, do we consider ourselves suddenly dull and boring? Why are non-alcohol related activities suddenly like, oh, a bit flat and a bit dull, whereas under normal circumstances, they would probably be joyful and exciting? Great question. It's simple. We've been getting our cheap thrills through alcohol. When we are in the cycle of drinking, our dopamine receptors are overloaded. Normal things, remember when you were a kid, Remember the high you would get riding your bike with the breeze and maybe you have the things in your spokes and you're just so happy? Or your song comes on the radio and you click to record to make your mixtape, right? Those natural dopamine highs. You can get back to that. But here's what happens. We start drinking and as soon as we ingest that alcohol, we have a dopamine overload 10 times the amount of dopamine is delivered by drinking than it is through regular happy activities. 10 times. 10 times. Wow. So it's a huge surge of dopamine. Mm. What happens after the dopamine high wears off is our body is scrambling to return to homeostasis, which is a nice set point. That state of contentment you know, you're not you're not too high, you're not too low, you're steady, mm -hmm. homeostasis. Uh, lots of other chemicals are released uh, to get us back to a baseline. So we're our body's scrambling to counteract that huge dump of dopamine. Over time, our brain becomes accustomed to having that huge surge of dopamine, and our brain gets lazy. It says. <laughs> Why are you gonna go on a hike? I mean, okay, you've already done that hike. What's another sunset? Yada, yada, yada. Cute dog, playing with the kids. Okay, they're so adorable. When can I get my drink? Mm. It's because your brain has become lazy. It says, I don't really need to produce dopamine because I'm gonna get a big old serving of it. When that doesn't happen, that can produce the cravings. Mm. and. We've all been there. You might feel like a bad person if you are rushing through a dinner to get home to finish and, and, and have those extra three glasses of wine. You might feel like a horrible parent if you're playing ball with your kid, but you, how much longer do I need to play so I can go have a drink? Normally, those activities would provide enough pleasure that you would feel content and happy. But because the brain's gotten lazy, those normal activities aren't registering as pleasurable anymore. Mm. How long does it take not drinking to get back to the point where it is pleasurable? Here's the thing. Here's the catch. Work for your dopamine. So when someone stops drinking, and, and many of our members have attempted to stop on their own, being that lone wolf, that's it, I'm finished, I'm stopping drinking. They're not drinking. And so they're like, oh, I'll go back to the gym. Yeah, I'll play with my kids more. And they start to feel a little bit better, say within 30 days, there is some, some restoration of normal neurochemicals. Uh, but it's not exactly fun. They're going through the motions. And so there is some healing that's happening. There is some repair. Except if you are not actively working to change your brain, you're going to hit a stagnant point and the cravings will still be there because you have not really filled that void in your life with anything else. And your brain is still saying, okay, yeah, that was a decent workout, but man, where's my drink? When you come into Project 90, you might not feel great. You might be irritable, cranky. You don't want to open up to these people. Why did I do this? And that's okay. That's to be expected. And part of the education is to remove the shame or embarrassment that we feel that way, because we know that we shouldn't be drinking. 
When we understand that, hey, you're just in a dopamine deficit right now, it's going to be okay. And guess what? What did you like to do when you were 12? I had a client once, she said, I loved riding my bike to the 7-Eleven and I would get a Slurpee and some candy. I said, do you have a bike? She said, no. I said, how do you feel about buying one? She bought a bike and she would ride up to the 7-Eleven and do those things. So whatever you remember feeling really good about, go back and do that, even if it doesn't feel amazing yet, because it will. And when you're doing it, talk to yourself. When the cravings come up and, and, and your brain says, okay, nice, nice concert, but it'd be a lot better with some drinks, talk to yourself. I understand why you would think that. I understand. And what's going right? How about the fact that we didn't miss the favorite song because we were in line for another beer, right? So we're talking to ourselves and encouraging ourselves, being our own cheerleader, and then, of course, we've got the whole Project 90 community and coaches cheering us on. Over time, it's amazing when you have that first belly laugh, when you go on that hike and you see this and you're at the summit and it takes your breath away. And so the beautiful thing about being human is that we have an incredible ability to heal and repair. And it's not passive. It is an intentional, active pursuit, but it's a fun pursuit. Yeah, amazing. Can you just give me a couple of examples of members who have returned to childlike play and therefore replenished their natural dopamine receptors as opposed to they're just num numb, their dopamine receptors are void, they're numb, they're doing nothing, they're not firing. Are there some examples of clients and the things that they have done where they've now got the joy back in their life so much that they're not craving an alcoholic drink. Mm -hmm. Yes, we had a member who uh, was with us for a long time. He actually owned a brewery. He had worked very hard his entire life and part of his semi-retirement was owning a brewery. So he sat on that bar stool day after day after day with the same people telling the same stories and chasing that high, that happiness. When he joined Project 90, he went through the flatness and all the things that happened, but he stuck with it. He told us that when he was a kid, he loved Porsches, the car, and he would buy the little matchbox, matchbox, size, cars, matchbox yep. size Porsches. He would buy uh, kits to build a model Porsche. Mm -hmm. As he grew up and became successful, he, he bought a Porsche. Mm -hmm. When he was in our program, he had such a passion for it. And, you know, he would talk to us a lot about Porsches mm -hmm. that he eventually came up with the idea of finding people, like-minded people who loved Porsches. Mm. And he joined a Porsche club. So he would go and just like 12 year old him, would get all excited about the Porsche, talking about Porsche and meet up with like-minded people and have their Porsche meetings, enjoying a meal together, talking about the new models and things like that. Yeah, I love that, amazing. Some things I know that I've implemented into my life since I've been alcohol free that I get immense pleasure from is just simply walking to the gym instead of driving to the gym, like walking and tracking my steps. So I have an aura ring that I'm wearing here and I endeavor to get 10,000 steps a day, but actually just getting out and walking with the sunshine on my full thick head of hair here <laughs> and uh, walking to the gym instead of driving to the gym I feel progress is being made because I'm getting my steps in, plus I'm getting out in nature. Uh, I'm getting sunlight, which has been shown to be great for us. It improves our sleep because I go to the gym in the morning. Um, I have a cup of coffee and I enjoy having the cup of coffee after I work out. So I go to the gym, I work out, and then I look forward to walking home and along the way walking home, stopping and having a cup of coffee. That gives me so much more joy and pleasure than any amount of alcohol that I ever drank. Likewise, in 2023, I took my nine-year-old nephew to a Tottenham Hotspur football game in London, England. Tottenham's my favorite team. And going to pick him up in Oxford on the train, take him back down to London, take him to the game, get a, a Tottenham shirt with his name on the back. He had Swanick on the back. And uh, Tottenham was losing 1-0 with five minutes to go, and we won 2-1. It was such an exciting end to the game, and we won. And watching the joy on his face 
gave me more joy than any amount of alcohol that I ever drank, than any drunken night I had where I was belly laughing Mm -hmm. uh, because the alcohol was there and I was in a different state. So I would just invite, I guess, our member to really go back to what is that joyful fun, that childlike play that you used to love, but you've now been replacing that joy from alcohol. Uh, What are those things that you loved as a child? What are the things that really light you up? And it's okay if it doesn't light you up in the first week or two because you're just starting this process. Give it some time, trust the process, the dopamine receptors will be replenished and the dopamine receptors will fire from walking to the gym, having a cup of coffee, taking a a child or a family member and sharing an experience with them. It just takes time, right, Coach Victoria? Absolutely. You know, our community is comprised of high achieving people. These are not individuals who are used to a quick fix or instant gratification. When our member starts medical school, they know they've got a road ahead of them. Mm. They are not even expecting immediate gratification. And yet, becoming a doctor is likely one of the biggest achievements of their lives, something they hold very, very dear. And so we invite our members to remember who they really are. Alcohol closes, it, it, our window of tolerance to discomfort is very small when we're in the cycle of drinking. And we become a bit like toddlers. We want what we want and we want it now. Except that's not who we are. Everyone in here has worked for their success. And so when I invite them to implement that same long range vision, it becomes much more palatable. Like, oh, okay, 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 yes, this this is kind of rough. I'm not I'm not loving this right now. And I'm gonna keep doing it because I know in the end it's gonna be so much better than anything I could snap my fingers and receive. I've had a life with alcohol and a life without. Without is way better. Same. <laughs> Absolutely.